withering waves, more like bothering babes, am I right boys? Yeah, I'm very lonely. The first few days of this launch of this game were very interesting. To have a significant bugs crashing and freezing the game, to Genshin and Pickers performing satanic rituals for the downfall of the game. Fortunately enough, Kira games are very open to hearing issues of the game and are more than happy to improve them in a heartbeat. But is it enough to destroy Genshin Impact? So, we have this tier list right here. I think I paid 200 bucks on Fiverr to have them make it for me. Shout out to them. Just to familiarize yourself with this tier list, we have these categories on the top and the ranks on the left. D is a fail, anything above that is a passing grade. S tier demonstrates that it's really good and there's little to no issues with it. It is a work in progress, but I like to use this on future gacha games. I would also like to use this tier list on anime and TV shows that I may review in the future. Of course, the criteria will change and those sort of things will be posted in my other channel. I think this channel will be only dedicated to gacha games and the other channel will be content outside of it. Oh yeah, you're probably wondering why I put a triple S tier rather than a single S. It's because I can. Anyway, let's get right into the first criteria. Now, this relates to the characters' appearance and their voice dialogues, and I'm also including the weapons' appearances as well. I like the character design, I think it's pretty cool. The female characters look very nice. I don't really have any complaints towards them, and even if I do, I can't really tell you them, because, you know, it's a preference thing and it doesn't really affect the overall grade. Hey, you still want to know? Uh, I don't like Gang Gang, she looks like Toad. I think Gang Gang in the ghetto needs to shoot her down. Yinlin? I'm not really supposed to talk about her because of that incident. I guess Yinlin vibe kind of reminds me of Makima from Chainsaw Man, which is very odd. But Makima scares me a lot, and I feel like I won't be able to play the blue in ways if I pull for Yinlin, so, D tier. Okay, fine. I'll put you in S tier, scary bitch. Yinlin, you ain't gonna do shit to me. I'm putting you in D tier. I am sick of this tyranny. I got my boys with me and they're gonna... Wait, please. No, please. I'm sorry. No! Yeah, anyway, they've done great work with the male characters. I like me some long-haired men, and some of my games made the majestic, long-haired motherfuckers to be more attractive masculine. I didn't like how Hoi Vest did with the variant Don Hong, since they turned my boy into a fanboy with muscle dystrophy. So, I'm extremely happy with what they've done with the male characters in Within Wind Waves. But I find it strange that 80% of the male characters have long hair styles. But, I'll let that slide. Voice acting for characters? I think it's okay. It didn't really blow me away. I find the EN dub to have a weird voice tone in certain situations. Now, this doesn't apply to all the characters, but for the emotionless characters with the emotionless dialogues that are prominent in the story quest, it does chip away your sanity. A lot of the weapon's appearance have this minimalistic approach. Not a lot of things going on with the design of it. They made some really interesting color choices and shapes for certain weapons. They don't look bad, but they don't look good either. Curry Games had this issue as well with Punishing Grey Raven, but overall, I give it a B+. I kind of wish they did more with it. There were a few locations that are pretty vibrant with colors and sunlight, but there are other areas that are bland and void of color. Now, that sort of color choice is great for areas like desolate and destroyed buildings, which immerses you into those type of environments, but I feel like that type of color choice is a default choice for most of the areas. I feel like the overall world was originally grey, and Curry Games decided to splash a few colours in some areas. If you ask me what colour reminds me of Riving Waves, it will be grey. It's like I'm living in the UK. Also, the environment does not render in that nicely, like where the grass loads in. In far distances, the grass fields that hasn't been rendered looks very smooth and it looks very weird. Honestly, you guys might shake me for this, but I think Genshin Impact's environment is better, so I'll put it in B tier. What the fuck you Genshin writing, cock? Why would you even say that, you fucking men pecker? Exploration is a very vital thing for every open world game, and I think Breathing Ways did really well in this. They implemented the world running ability so you'd be able to climb up close with ease, especially if you're trying to get those gold cubes. You find me in live streams just exploring the nooks and crannies of the world most of the time, not because I like exploring, but because I have OCD. I often sidetracked a lot when I'm doing quests because once I see like an interactive event like defeating mobs to open chests or doing puzzles, it's a mindset that I have to do it, otherwise it'd be a waste of time if I do it later, and after that I've been exploring for 6 hours. Yeah, there was this thing I found very funny where to open doors, you need to find a huge battery pack to open them. I don't know why they need batteries for doors, but I like that slide since it's like a puzzle. 
Speaking of puzzles, I love the puzzles in Genshin Impact and Honkai Cyril, but I think Raving Waves have done a better job at this. You have these variations of puzzles and minigames, albeit there was some really clunky experience with the Flying Echo minigame. The controls on that one is terrible, but most of the time, the other stuff is really cool. I think my favourite one is the Tetris piece, it really itches my brain in the right way. There are other puzzles that I liked, like the connect the circuits, the pieces you put to light up all the tiles and so on. The least one I liked is the one where you had to find boxes to put down on a red platform. I'm not a huge fan of that, but anyway, I wish there were more puzzles though, because I really like puzzles. Overall, I'll give it an A. I gotta be honest, I think it's very ugly. Throughout the icons in the terminal and navigating through the map, they tend to rarely use warm and strong colours. It's always these greyish and cool colours that it gives me this immersion that I'm living in the UK. The fonts in this game I find a little bit strange. I got used to them but I still find them strange. They appear even more bizarre when it shows up in mini games and names on top of the NPC's head. They just look out of place. The overall map design seems gloomy with the interactive tabs having this grey background which makes it look pretty bland. Nevertheless, I have no issues with navigating the icons and tabs as they are pretty neatly arranged so it's easy to know where things are. In this criteria, I'll also discuss the Echo system just due to the fact that I don't have enough spaces for the tealers. Echoes is a pretty cool addition to the game. I do understand that leveling up your databank is pretty time consuming along with grinding the right stats for the Echoes. Not only that, since the concept of Echoes is a new thing that hasn't been done in other gacha games, you have to learn how to equip the Echoes and be aware of the cost function, stuff like that. For me, I think it's fine except for one thing, tuning. You need materials to tune your Echoes in order to unlock substats despite the fact that the Echoes you leveled up is at max level. I didn't like that at all. Echoes are pretty much a high investment due to the grind of getting those Echoes, the amount of EXP materials they eat, and the scarcity of tunes. Imagine you didn't get a good substat for your Echoes, guess what, you just had to do it again while wasting a lot of EXP materials and tuners. You can't use useless Echoes as an EXP replacement, which is very strange. Along with this, the restrictions of cost means that you can't equip any Echoes that have a desirable main stats and substats. This whole thing, I think is going to be very grindy, and I haven't even started yet. But of course, this sort of thing doesn't matter if you're playing this game casually. But if you want the best Echoes, you will experience pain. When I leveled up my first Echo to level 10, uh, which I definitely did not cheat. I realized you need tuners to get substats and during that moment, I thought that was strange until I started thinking ahead on how that's going to be like for grinding. And in that moment, I was pissed due to the issues mentioned previously, but I try not to let that distract me for playing the rest of the game. Overall, I'll give it a C+. Hey man, I gotta give them this W cause the combat is really good. You have these really cool transitions on the outro skill and intro skills which enhances the combat. You have this variation of attacks and combos that you can bring out, it's very flashy, it's very fast paced and it gets your adrenaline going. The Resonant Liberation which are ultimates are really cool to look at and I believe this is the best gacha combat I have ever played. Now I was a little bit turned off since area combos isn't really a thing in this game and only one character can utilize it which is Ling Yang. Performing ground combos then doing an uppercut to transition into an area combo is satisfying like in Bayonetta and Devil May Cry. Funny thing about that, I changed my mind. I got Ling Yang in my roster and I played him. I mean I can play him, but I kept thinking this dude is a nightmare to play in a mobile device. And I think it's pretty much a little bit unsatisfied to play with a keyboard and mouse. Throughout the whole combat, I was using an Xbox 360 controller because, you know, it's a hack and slash game and I recommend you to use it. Unless you mainly play an iOS or Android device, then Unlucky, there's no controller support on the mobile device. I'm not really too sure why they. This should be a mandatory thing. They did it for Punishing Grey Raven, albeit the controller support in that game was whack, but it does have controller support. But anyway, if you have Ling Yang and you use a mobile device, consider re-rolling. Unless you don't mind playing him at all, then that's terrific. In my opinion, I prefer not to touch the mobile version of Ruling Waves because I don't really like using the phone combat interface, especially if I'm playing it on my huge tablet. But if you're playing it on a standard size phone, I think it's pretty good. I did try using it on my phone and I think the button layer is pretty nice and accessible. It's just that my phone and tablet isn't that powerful and the graphics doesn't look good comparable to PC, so I tend to avoid playing it on a mobile device. But it would be nice if they have controller support though. Another thing is that when you're fighting enemies on slopes, the camera angles gets really bad and if you're surrounded by boxes, enemies do tend to get on top of them, preventing you hitting them. Despite that, the combat itself is really good in PC and I would say pretty playable for mobile devices. 
and I don't think I can find any issues with the combat itself, so I'll put in an S tier. A lot of things I'm going to say onwards is just me recycling words from these two videos, but those videos will clarify more on what I'm discussing. The story is extremely disappointing, even though I had my expectations low for this. I wasn't a huge fan of the story in Genshin Impact and Honka Star Rail due to them over bloating their dialogues, but I was hoping for Rhythm Wave's story to be decent. It doesn't have to be the best, it just has to be decent enough. Unfortunately, Rhythm Wave's stories are over bloated like Mihoyu did with their stories. In the only bit, the story was okay, but they decided to introduce a lot of new terms and try to explain them, but somehow it doesn't make sense. Now, the good thing is, is that Curry Games added a skip function to go past the long dialogues. You can't really use it for all of the story quests, but as of now, Curry Games is implementing this more often in future patches. It will be nice that if you skip a dialogue scene, it'll pop up a window of a written summary of that specific scene. You know, a thing that improves quality of life. Now, I'm up to date with the main story quests. The side quests, not really. But with the main quest, I try not to skip the scenes, despite the dialogues to be over bloated, because I really want to try to understand it. There was a lot of things that I was confused about, maybe because I skipped the side quest and haven't gone far into the game, but the world building of Reeling Waves, I often ask myself, why is it like this? Why is the tacit mark in the form of wavelengths? Why is there a reference in music and devices you interact with? Why are the character skills and abilities terms being in the form of music? What is the law behind the elemental resonance? There's a lot of unanswered questions, and I wish they had someone explain this. Now, I heard quite a few people are saying that the game doesn't have to be story oriented at all. I highly disagree about that. Imagine the base shell of the car is any game, the four wheels are the criteria and the factors of the game, story is one of the wheels. The other three wheels are fine, but one of the wheels, which is the story, isn't filled with air enough. Basically, it's almost comparable to a flat tire. It can still somewhat drive, but the vehicle's mobility isn't going to be that good, and you won't be able to travel that well. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that a game shouldn't rely on one thing to carry the entire game. You can't just work out only for the upper body and disregard your legs, otherwise you're going to look like you have chicken legs. Story is an important factor that makes the game move, especially if it's an open world game. And unfortunately, they did not do it well. I'm leaning towards giving it a D, but the section where Sky appears was actually pretty interesting. Just for that, I'll give it a C-. The story might improve, but I really don't think it will be a huge jump. I love music, I love it so much, and it's so heartbreaking to say this, but I think it's pretty disappointing in Within Waves. And it's pretty ironic, since the whole world revolves around the concept of music. There were quite a few songs that I liked. You have this lo-fi beat Chinese pipa in the main city of Jinshu. It's very relaxing and it's very nice. Unfortunately, that stops there when 80% of you playing this game is accompanied by ambient music, which is fine, but it's very underwhelming and forgettable. I gotta tell you the truth, but Ruling Way's music pales in comparison to Genshin Impact. I'll just replay what I've said in my previous videos here. Number 6, Music. I don't know too much about the music for Rhythm and Waves, so I won't say too much. That sort of thing, I want to experience it first hand in the game, rather than me just intentionally just looking for it in YouTube. I remembered when Tectone was doing a reaction video. If you haven't subscribed to him, you should do that. I'm just trying to support small creators. I'm not too sure what that video was, but he was listening to one of the OSTs from Rhythm and Waves, and he was bopping his head while repeatedly saying, It's good, right? It's good, right? And I was just sitting there saying, yeah, it's good. It's, it's good. I haven't played Genshin Impact for years since I hated that game with a short passion, but I got to give them some respect. Their music was bangers. Born of ice and frost. I hate that game, but their music is so catchy and memorable. <laughs> like, it's really good. It's really good. In all fairness, that's the only music I heard from Moving Waves, and it's a while ago, so who knows if the other songs are better. I'm certain that the type of music is electronic, but they might add more music genres afterwards. But yeah, I hate Genshin Impact, but I gotta give them credits where credit is due. But I do understand if Rhythm Waves are not able to be on the same music level as Genshin Impact. But I'll be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed with the music in Tectone's video. Music is a really big factor for me. Maybe that's why I enjoy playing Final Fantasy, Celeste, Doom. You probably don't care about music as much as I do. 
but if you want to hold me by the balls, you gotta give me some banger music. Despite the video being made before this review, I still feel the same emotions for the music in Within Waves. A lot of the songs are just diluted with ambience music, and hey, if you like this sort of music, there's nothing wrong with you, but they're just not memorable, and they don't leave a huge impact for me, like Genshin Impact did. When I'm fighting Brickly bosses, you expect them to have this really epic music that screams that you're going to fight like your life depends on it. Now, nah, it's just ambient music, and I often mistaking it for pure silence. Now, there are other places that has this rock riff and electronic music for tacit discords. Unfortunately, there's only a few, and they don't really give me the chills like I felt with Genshin Impact. Funny enough, I am currently experiencing a bug where music doesn't show up in my playthrough, so it's basically silence. So there might be quite a few songs that I've missed. Not that it makes any difference, to be honest. But I cannot stress this enough. This is a subjective thing, so if you like Rhythm Waves music, good for you. But with me, I feel like the music is so unpolished and I'm not too sure if the music composers for Punishing Grey Raven has anything to do with Rhythm Waves. Halo Week, Ghost Final, Fluorite and other PGR music composers that have made extraordinary music. Here are some examples. What the fuck happened? Throughout the playthrough in Breathing Ways, I have never experienced any music that comes close to that. I'm not saying that they should have the exact same composers in PGF for Breathing Ways, but have someone who can provide a music level similar to those guys. I highly anticipated open world game shouldn't really have ambient music as they may think, especially if it's trying to rival against Genshin Impact. Anyway, the music is underwhelming and I'm really disappointed by this. See. As a newcomer, you get a lot of benefits with the early gachas. The first beginner banner guarantees you a random 5 star character within 50 pulls, and following that, a 5 star character selection of your choice within 80 pulls. And not only that, very early on, you get a 5 star character selector for free. That is insane. The event weapons banner guarantees the weapons itself through pity, so that's really nice. Reaching 80 pity seems quite high for my taste, especially with a low chance of getting an S tier character, but it's like that with most gacha games. But due to the benefits you get early on, I give it an A overall. Anyway, that's it. Um, here's the thing. I think with this game, I'm actually not too surprised with people having varying opinions on this game. There's people who loves it, there's people who thought it was okay, and there's people who outright hates it. Everyone knows that carry games are much more responsive to issues compared to other gacha companies, but is that really enough? There are issues within this game that are very hard to fix and should have been addressed way before the launch of the game. These sorts of things doesn't leave a good impression that it can compete against Genshin Impact. Honestly, if someone tries out Breathing Waves, doesn't like it and uninstall the game, I totally understand it. But I would say this, the combat is really good. I think the combat is the main thing that people are really invested to. But there are people who want to be immersed in the story, music and environments and doesn't really care much about the combat. Unfortunately, I don't think this game will be for them. I feel like this game is being carried out by the combat and everything else is not up to par with it. I feel like compared to other content creators and reviewers, I may be a bit more strict and nitpicky than them, but it's because I love Rhythm Ways and I see the potential, but I have to give an unbiased perspective and see all viewpoints of the game, including my own. But all that I've said is mostly a preference thing and is subjective, so you should take my opinions with a grain of salt. But yeah, I think that is it. If you guys enjoyed this video, give this a like, subscribe, comment down what you think. I have coffee and Patreon if you want to invest into my money laundering scheme. I have like two mole rats to feed soft being a dad but yeah i really do appreciate you guys and i really do hope i see you in the next video all right see you see you see you see you see you